The model building codes call for flashing to be installed on a home in seven different locations, the first being at the base of the wall. So let's talk for a moment about the proper and improper installation of the base flashing uh, around floor height, first floor height in a residence. The slide that you see depicts a, a brick ledge again, and uh, I'm going to show you the proper installation first. This is a flexible rubber flashing that you see going onto the wall. Notice how it just cuts back and uh, turns the corner there to the right. A little mastic should be applied, something to bind the two together, unless you're using some sort of a peel and stick that already has a sticky back on it. The next piece is installed in the same fashion and wraps around from right to left, as you see here. Notice how the corner is completely lapped in flashing. If you come by now and put your paper on the wall, be it some type of house wrap or as you see here, just tar paper, any water that comes down the face of that wall now will shingle right down onto the flashing and exit through the weep holes. But this is what I see many, many times, both residentially and commercially. Whoever installs the flashing at the base just comes to the corner on both sides, but does not see the need to wrap the corner. So what they've effectively done now is collected water, directed it toward the corner in large amounts, and uh, made a really big leak in one place, basically at the corner. That's what uh, was taking place here on this inspection that I did earlier. Uh, this is a school building, but uh, same would be true residentially. The flashing there in the bottom left-hand corner came to the corner of that building from both sides and stopped, and there was a bad leak at that corner. Always remember, you must lap and seal the flashing at the corner of a wall. 